What's up, Power Peeps? It's your boy, Vince White, with another edition of the Icon Equation. And today, we're going to be talking about building a universe. Hey everybody, it's me Vince White and just like the intro said, today we're going to be talking about building a universe. People ask me all the time, hey Vince, what's the secret to making a great comic? And I tell them this, people don't read comics, they read universes. Do you get it? Let me tell you. If you ask the average person, hey, what comics do you read? Normally, they'll come back and say, I read Marvel or DC or Image or Dark Horse or trade paperbacks or indies, whatever they say, right? Normally, their first response is the universe. They invest themselves in the universe of comics. So if a fan is a fan of Iron Man, due to its continuity, they're really a fan of Marvel. And this is how it goes. When you're really a comic book fan, you associate the title with the universe it's in, not just the title. And you start from the hierarchy down. And the hierarchy in comics is the universe it's in, right? And this is the key, in my opinion, of what makes a great comic book is having a great universe. If you have a great universe, then any comic you make can be great in that universe. And in fact, let's say you put out a bad title, it's not too great. Well, it doesn't kill the universe. And people might let that slide because after all, they're really invested in the universe. Ah, so let me ask you this. How many indie creators go out and they create titles and never once think about the universe they're in? Oh, I have this character. He stalks the night. He's, he, 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 he thrives off of vengeance in the alley. Right? Never once do you know um, the world that he's in. And this translates into art as well. When that writer gives that script to the artist, you ever wonder why the art, even, even if you have a great artist, you ever wonder why a lot of indie books look kind of plain? Because the writer never described the universe to the artist. So what type of world does the artist draw? A generic world, a generic world world. And what does that mean for your title? It becomes a generic title. <laughs> Case in point, there are, there are a couple of great indie books out there right now. The art is on point. The, the, the characters are dope. And, and, and the creative teams and so forth, man, they have the zest and the zeal and the gusto. You know, they, they have it right but when you open the book it just like it just looks like characters on a page characters in a panel because these characters aren't really in a universe <laughs> the quintessentials of real comic them has slipped by them they have forgotten about the universe most importantly so 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 you're sitting there you're like what do you mean this? What are, I hear you talking about this universe thing. You know, you've been this guru. You created the Legend of Willpower. You got a lot of buzz. You got a lot of fans. You created the Powerverse. You, you know, had some stat foods. You fell off. Who, who are you? What? <laughs> Come on. What I'm trying to tell you is before I did the Legend of Willpower, I spent 20 years reading comics and researching comics. You know, I was I was one of those groupies <laughs> back in the 90s, and I got in, the, got my foot in the door, working with Image, working underneath uh, Ryan Benjamin and Matt Broom. You know, we were working on books like Cable and Phantom Guard, and, and was I the lead artist? No, I was the dude. That, I was the dude that would say, "Vince, go get us some KFC," <laughs> and I would run out and get chicken and bring it back. Filling these blacks here, do, do this background. That's what I did. Okay, 
I, I've seen it all come and go. And I study, I study, I study what makes iconic characters and books and companies iconic. I really did. And there is a method to the madness. There's an actual formula to doing this. And that is when I created the Icon Equation, which is a book I sell on my site, thepowerverse.com. <laughs> but what Rodney and I have made also into a podcast. So in the Icon Equation podcast, we give you glimpses and glimmers of what the book tells you and breaks down in detail. And so you can take those lessons learned and leverage them and apply them to your title and your comic book endeavors. So that being said, those are my credentials and this is how they apply to the universe. Okay, you don't want characters on a page. You don't want characters on a panel. What you want are characters in an environment, a world, okay? If your character is sliding down a building or let's say he's leaping from one ledge to another, okay? Um, what type of ledge? What type of building? If your character is jumping out of a plane, what type of plane? And what type of sky? What type of fuel does the plane use? And why? Okay, those sound like very arbitrary questions, but they're not. They're not. But let me take it back to the beginning so that you can really understand what it is about universes. When you make your comic, what I suggest you do is you also roll it back and you create your universe from the ground up. See, the universe is also a character in your comic. It, it, we are living in a universe right now. We're living in a universe that has COVID-19. We've got a semi on the verge civil war brewing in our own country. Our president is a reality show talk show host turned God to many and devil to a great multitude. <laughs> okay, we have the internet. Does your world have the internet? Right? Uh, these things are all predicated on how the universe was created. My, that's my point. So in the power verse, I went all the way back, all the way back. How did the universe come about? Even if your character is a street crime fighter and he has, he doesn't even deal with anything, you know, outside the purview of an alley. Well, there might be one, one episode, one issue where you know, some serial killer gets possessed. Where is he getting possessed from? Is there heaven and hell in your world? Are there demons? Is this possession coming from the fifth or fourth dimension? Are there dimensions? It, is your character, is your streetwise vigilante really the avatar for some justice god sitting on the throne playing a game of gotcha with another god from the depths of Haiti who is inspired to create crime. And you didn't know that until issue 20. Okay. <laughs> when you create your universe, you can start to give hints to a lot of things that are bigger that you may never ever flesh out. But what it does for the reader is it lets them know that they're, they're not just reading something. They're immersing themselves into something. They're immersing themselves into a reality. They're not reading a comic book. They're going into another world. You, you get it? What this creates, why this, why this is so fundamental to the icon equation, why it can make your comic book more successful, is because it creates a level of investment. Your reader has funds. And unless he's a billionaire, his funds are limited. But in the marketplace of ideas, there's so many people vying for his dollar, right? And we have been so fortunate to have people still in this day and age, you know, buy indie comics off of crowdfunding platforms. Currently, I have a multiverse card set that you can put your character into up on Indiegogo. It's called Indie Deck. It's the upper deck for the indie market. Go check that out. <laughs> Just go type in Indie Deck uh, 
comic book card. Check that out. And then you jump in, put your character in. It's only ten dollars. Put your character in. It's only twenty dollars for a deck. Anyway, let's get back to. <laughs> Let's see. You want you are vying for your reader's attention, and when you tell him there's more than what's on the page, then you reassure him that he he is making a great investment because reading comics are not just reading comics. It's an investment. It's an investment of life, time, years. Okay, when you talk to a real comic head, comic book head. He's talking to you about storylines that have taken place over 20, 30 years. 20 or 30 years. I'm in, uh, uh, here, hate to say it, I'm in my late 40s. And, you know, when we talk about the X-Men cartoon show, that's, that's, a, that's like how a lot of young uh, people got into comics. But for me, I was darn near 20 or 30 when that came out. 2020. Okay, so I was, I had a whole adolescence period prior to that of comics. And when we have these discussions, we're talking about, you know, stuff that happened back in pre 90, you know, like, like Wolverine when he, when he fought the ninjas and he went to Japan and Yakuza and oh man, Iceman going up against the Yakuza. And, and uh, Captain America and Wolverine teaming up to fight the freaking ninjas. I mean, great freaking stuff, man. And we that the only old heads can talk about, <laughs> right? But it's deep, deep stuff, right? Batman, The Dark Knight Returns. Oh my God, Frank Miller, Frank Miller, Daredevil. Man, um, great stuff. So we've taken a great part of our lives and invested it into those stories and characters. The only way a reader is going to do that is if he finds the world immersive. So you have to do a lot more than just say, my character's fighting crime. All right, so we're going to create a universe right now. First, we're going to create a character. Uh, and then we're gonna, I'm going to retrofit it. So just, just to give you an idea, okay? Let's say um, I'm, going to take, I'm going to take Thor and I'm going to switch him up. Uh, instead of him being a god, he's going to be a human. And he's going to be invited to godhood. Okay? Instead of a hammer, he's going to have a... Ooh, let's say he has these magical boots. <laughs> so, he calls the boots. The boots come. Ow, ow. He slap on his feet and bam, he turns into this version of Thor. So what's Thor backwards? T-H-O-R, so Roth. We're going to call homeboy Roth. And when the boots come on, his whole armor comes on. And uh, well, what, where, where are these boots coming from? We have to figure out. Well, we'll figure out where these boots are coming from. Let's make Roth, let's make him Asian. And these boots are from dragon scales. So we have dragon scale boots and armor. And now he is in his Roth form, the dragon slayer. Okay, so now and what Roth does, he's in the States and he has dragons are still alive, but they look like humans. They've hidden themselves via their magic and they are the most powerful kings of industry and power. And now they're trying to bring back the magical age and lift the veil. All right. So, <laughs> all right. They're trying to lift the veils. How, why, why is the veil there? The veil was placed there uh, at some period in time to separate man from magic. All right. So now the veil goes all the way back to creation. Okay. So, uh, first thing that was ever that ever existed was an egg, the cosmic egg, and when it cracked open, it gave birth to two beings, the dragon and the human. Ah, then the yolk spread out and formed the cosmos and the world, and both dragon and man existed, and they worked well together until the dragon found on the very outskirts of existence the remnants of the shell the shell of the egg and the shell 
contained all reality. So the shell has the ability, the ability to manipulate reality. And when the dragon ate it, he took on that ability. And that ability to warp reality, we call magic. And with that ability, he began to encroach upon man and force his way. So the great wars between men and dragons began. It felt like a losing battle until the men found a piece of the shell as well. And what they were able to do with it was forge an armor. And this armor allowed one bearer, the Roth, to go against the dragons and and with his magical ability he created a veil and placed the rest behind the veil using the power of his magic and the dragons were not seen or heard of ever since but just as he accomplished this goal one of the remaining dragons reached out with their dying breath bit him in half <laughs> Tearing his body apart, they ripped his body apart, pulled the upper half back through the veil, and the only thing that fell on the side of man were his boots. So this is where the boots come from. All right, so now we got our backstory. <laughs> we have our universe. We know how it came from. There's the egg, the shells. The shells are the source of magic. Uh, the dragons are, they are a creational source, so is man. And the yolk is the earth. So the yolk and its fluids, the water, so this, this is what the earth is made of. Right? So now we have, oh man, it's, the, it's today's world covered with today's glamour, but it's really covering up this old truth. And so when you go into certain areas, let's say you go to an auction and people are paying billions of dollars for a statue. Oh, it's great. You get a home and crack a statue open just for, just for a piece of the shell inside. Something smaller than a penny. Why? Because with it, they can wield its magic. All right. And so somehow, somehow the dragons have resur resurfaced and now they're trying to vie their way into the levers of power and hopefully find a way to crack the veil. And you have average guy who somehow stumbled upon the boots, didn't know what they were. And when he put them on, he awakened a group of monks who were protecting this knowledge and realized someone has found the armor. And when they go to him, they realize he only has the boots. <laughs> But with it, he can summon the essence of the whole armor. Not the true armor itself, but the essence. You see, you see when you create the universe, how you can then pull from it, you pull from it, you pull from it. Now, all this stuff about the universe can slowly drip out over time. And you can hint to it. And it makes the reader realize oh there's more and there's more and there's more and there's more with an ultimate ending so you, they know there's a payoff if they keep reading there's a payoff and once you tell the whole story that's not the end of the title no that's just the seed because now that they found the egg and uh, maybe all the dragons were slain now and, and the Roth has been successful you know <laughs> yes then he walks away in the sunlight with the monks and they're all cheering. Some little girl goes down to, <laughs> to the water and she's like swimming in it and so forth. And she goes underneath and she finds this yellow, round, shining rock and she pulls it out. She pulls it up. She carries it out of the water and she's like, mommy, mommy, look at this. And all of a sudden it becomes wet droopy and it covers her up in this yellow gook and she turns into something totally different it's the last solid remnant of the yolk <laughs> now the story goes in another direction and in order to in order to stop the yolk because it felt like it never had a chance it was always just a terra firma uh for the dragon and man now it feels like it's its turn to to walk upon the earth and shape in it, its desired way and now Roth realizes in order to stop the yoke, he needs to bring the dragons back. <laughs> this is the importance of creating a universe. 
this is the importance of creating a universe. So when Roth is in a office, you know, there's posters and things on the news about you know, eggs and yolks and people talk about a certain things, but they don't, they, the regular humans don't know the significance of it, but he does. And the reader starts to understand that there is a, a meaning behind it. Okay, you, you give them levels and levels to dive into. So um, my main point and the point of this whole podcast was to tell you, when you create a character, create a universe, it's just like when you purchase clothes. If you like Gucci, you like the things that Gucci puts out. If you like Old Navy, then you might like the sweaters the Old Navy puts out. You don't say, I like the blue shirts. You say, no, I like, I like, you know, I like guests. I like Prada. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what you say. That's literally what you say. And then you drill down from there. And the same is true for your comic. So if you've got a comic out there and you, you've created a character or a team and I, you can't tell me how the universe was created, then you've got work to do. Hit the creative boards, open up that word processor. <laughs> And, and write out your reality. Tell us how it came about. Shoot, if it never materializes in the book, add an extra page in each comment. And each page just talks about how that universe came to be. Okay? Just do that. All right? Look, it will make your book iconic. My time is running short. Um, my plan is about to come to take me all to... <laughs> my plane is coming... And that tells me it's time for me to jet. Oh, you like that. So with that, this is Vince White, your boy, Power Peeps. I'm out. And thank you for being cool enough to listen to The Icon Equation. 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 The Icon Equation.